We, as always, play the supporting role. When they're here, it's a, it's a job like any other. But when they go overseas, they definitely need someone who is their direct contact, I suppose, to their real world. You know, you never knew whether your loved one would return, or even if they did return, they could be shell-shocked or brain damaged. I've had to accept the fact that it has affected him and that this is what we live with now. Uh, it took a long time. I kept waiting for him to get better and change. We found out five days after Kieran left that I was pregnant with our second child. Um, so I'm now six months pregnant um, with a baby girl. I've got a son, Lachlan, who's 18 months, bundle of energy and on the go constantly. They say that the first month and the last month are your, are your hardest. And I'd have to say probably three weeks in was, was probably my hardest because I was just getting into the pregnancy. Um, morning sickness was quite bad. It's getting trickier to try and, um, how do I put it? I suppose go through each day. He wrote that he heard our song, and it could be our song from now on, and it was uh, the Mamas and the Poppers. Can you, what was it called again? No. The Mamas and the Poppers. It must poppers. be our song, but I can't was, remember what it was. It was about <laughs> looking up at the stars, and when you look up at the stars, I'm thinking of you, so and that sort of thing. So every time I come, that was our song, for years and years. I haven't heard it for years, being an old one. But that was our song, and that was about the only romantic thing he ever did, because he's not romantic. <laughs> he's still little. <laughs> Each night before you go to bed, my baby. Whisper. Probably even from the people who are going to who are in Afghanistan and Iraq, it's all going to be exactly the same. Because I, I don't think anyone can do any, do that type of job and not be affected by it. If if you're not affected by it, there's there's something wrong with you because there's that much that much degradation and pain and stuff like this that that if you don't get affected you know obviously you've got something missing in your in your brain. I have a saying that a day doesn't go by that he doesn't talk army and it was only two years of his life and he remembers it like it's yesterday and that's just what he's like. I just find that very very strange so obviously to me it had a huge impact on him and I presume it would have done to a lot of other people as well. We've been married for 65 years. Yes. <laughs> Long time. I still love her. Yeah, and I love you too, darling. Yeah. <laughs> now, looking back, I was very blessed in lots of ways. And I think the saddest part about it was everyone still called me Miss Graham. And I longed for them to call me Mrs. Williamson. <laughs> But night time we used to go to a first aid post and we could read Morse code and we did our duty by watching for aircraft and bombs and what have you. We did a bit of praying too. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done without prayer and um, it was an anxious time. It affected our lives completely. In fact, uh, you know, going away was, was a devastating uh, uh, experience. Yes, go overseas. It changed our lives. It, it, tension and nerves and mm. came into it later on. So many of the boys never returned, and that was sad. Yes, my dad was in the First World War. Mmm, so it's an army tradition, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder I had to fall in love with a, a nice man, nice soldier man. <laughs>